So people are still queuing up for the fantastic uh, Herman birthday cake, uh, but I'm afraid uh, while you're waiting in line, we have to start because uh, it's wonderful to see a full uh, orange hole here. First time, I would say, in two and a half years that it's possible uh, to be here with so many people. But of course, it's also a very special uh, event uh, tonight. It's special anyway this evening because it's the opening of the academic year this week. And it's the first uh, BK Talks, our uh, monthly, our regular uh, series of uh, debates, discussions and conversations uh, at the faculty. So very welcome to the first installment uh, of the BK Talks of this academic year. But of course, yeah, and we already had a, a small uh, party, uh, a very warm welcome to our uh, guest of honor, Herman Hersberger. But he's not our only guest. Uh, we have a, a wonderful group of guests here uh, sitting on the uh, orange chairs. And of course, they will all in turn uh, give their contribution uh, to the festivities. Um, I don't think I really need to introduce uh, my neighbor, uh, Herman Hitzberger, uh, but still, maybe just a few things. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, we celebrate his birthday, and from the age that Herman has reached, in good health, as we can see, and we're very thankful for that, he finished his studies in Delft, not in this building, obviously, in 1958, quite some time ago. And what I think is really an exceptional feat, and also congratulations, I think, to our faculty, that we had the opportunity that Hermann has been teaching here as a professor for 29 years, between 1970 and 1999. Is that yeah. I checked it, and it's even on your own website, so it <laughs> must be true. <laughs> yeah. And I know there are quite a few people uh, here also in the circle eh, who were students uh, in that period. Um, but of course, it's not only what you uh, contributed to, uh, to our faculty and, of course, to architecture and the world, but what's also very important for us eh, that you are... Uh, I would say, a founding father of the Berlage Institute. Uh, you were leading the Berlage Institute between 1990 and 1995. When the Institute started, uh, you were really the pioneer. Uh, the Institute started uh, in the famous orphanage building of Aldo van Eyck, <laughs> maybe uh, also a neighbor of another project of my other neighbor here. Um, and of course, the Berlage Institute is by now also a name that uh, is worldwide uh, recognized. And I think uh, you really made the foundations for that. And uh, I must say, I'm, I'm really proud that it was possible when the Berlage got in some stormy weather because of some decisions uh, in The Hague, that we were able as a faculty of uh, architecture uh, to uh, continue uh, the existence of the Berlage by really embracing uh, the Berlage Institute and making it part of our uh, faculty. Sadly, uh, the director of the Berlage at this moment, Salomon Frausto, because of health reasons, is not able to be here. Uh, we wish him well, and I know that he is uh, listening to us uh, on the live stream. So get better soon, uh, Salomon. So the Berlage. And of course, many activities that are connected to uh, uh, the faculty, to the Berlage. I had a discussion with uh, Max Risselade, of course. Well, our generations all remember the uh, amazing Indesum uh, events, where you were really also uh, uh, taking up uh, a leading role. And I think, for me also looking back at my own uh, study period in the 1980s, uh, how you brought people from many places together, uh, organizing these juries. We were also a bit afraid of that, of course, but it was also Kenneth very Frampton. inspiring. Kenneth yeah, and Kenneth Frampton. Yeah. 
it's a long list. It's very impressive. And the good thing that also, I think also because you made it such a strong thing, the Indesum, that it's still there. Yeah? And uh, again, every two years here, uh, students organize a new uh, episode, a new installment of uh, the Indesum uh, Design Week here. Well, I could go on and on. Uh, I shouldn't do it, but it gives you a little bit. <laughs> I will ask the other people here uh, on the chairs uh, to do that. I don't want to talk too much myself. Um, so, yeah, let's start, uh, let's say, seeing what our guests can uh, contribute. And I want to start by giving the word to Johannes uh, Swartz. Um, a photographer, teacher also at the Rietveld Academy. And Johannes made a beautiful uh, series of photos in the workspace of Hermann. So in a way, that's also the idea we are, of course, Hermann is our guest, but in a way we are also his guest because we can also feel a little bit at his home because we can see the beautiful objects and all the books with which he has surrounded himself already uh, for many years. So, Johannes, can you take us along a little bit with your photos and the exhibition here? In, uh, I'm, it, I'm happy to do so. It was a privilege to uh, get access uh, together with Suzanne to uh, Hermann's uh, studio or to the working room. And Suzanne is uh, doing a long-term uh, project, getting the part of the archive to the new institute, if I'm not mistaken, right? And um, what you see on the walls there is uh, the, the studio is sort of a U, and the short side of the U are the windows, and then you have uh, two long walls, and the one wall is there, and it is basically made up of uh, steeples of uh, sheets that Hermann is still working on, and a huge collection of imagery, mainly art, uh, from all centuries, from all decades, from all sources, uh, collected, cut out, newspaper clippings. So it's a very, very layered and very rich uh, source of uh, uh, images. And next to it is on the opposite side is what you see here, the Musée Imaginaire, and that is a beautiful collection of uh, found objects, made objects, maquettes, uh, things made by the family. So that is very intimate and very personal. So the opposite of this, let's say, canon on the right-hand side with the images and the left-hand side, the object is, uh, is very intriguing and very, very dense, is I think the good word. Thank you, uh, Johannes, for taking us along in the exhibition. Knowing Hermann, I think he would like to react. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, I think it's a little bit naked to see all these things. You know, it's like you are like a, a doctor uh, seeing in the inside of, of me. But um, Sorry. and now it's open for, for, for everybody, you know, for the whole hospital. I, con <laughs> and, I confused uh, it, Herman. I confused the... But I people may, um, may think, yeah, what has that to do with architecture? Well... Uh, in fact, nothing. Uh, but all this junk is uh, telling something about me. And as far as it is interesting for you, I could give you a small explanation in the sense that my eyes are made in such a way that I don't... Uh, um, distinguish values, valuable things and non-valuable things. For me, everything is as valuable as his form and color is for working with, you know. So I find things on the street and everywhere I'm coming, my eyes are always looking, always seeing where are the nice people and where are the nice things? And um, I'm taking, uh, you know, things that are considered without value. 
So there's no hierarchy in my, in my seeing. And I see the, the way I'm seeing things is very similar to the way I'm hearing uh, um, tones, you know. Um, and uh, this is maybe, I could talk about that for half an hour, yeah. which I'm not going to do. <laughs> uh, but this is maybe the starting point of the idea of creation, you know, that you, that I'm not thinking, what is it worth? What is it for? Uh, uh, but that I'm just looking at it in its pure form. So all the things um, mean very much for me. Uh, and, and they are the, the, the source of inspiration. Thank you, uh, Herman. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, of course, uh, it's fantastic that you say this. And I think for me personally, uh, that's also really the contribution that you gave to us, to the faculty, to our education, certainly to my education, because you open our eyes, the eyes of the students, to look also at things and see value in things that we would hardly notice otherwise. And I think that's all for me also the essence of yeah, teaching architecture, is opening eyes. And we put that also uh, under a glass cover because they're very precious, two of your early uh, books that you made for the students, which is all about opening the eyes. And uh, I think that's still uh, absolutely as valid uh, today as it was uh, when we were studying. Mm -hmm. And I'm also happy to be able to say that maybe you don't talk about it now for half an hour, but you will be back the coming time in our faculty to work with students on a design project. And we're, of course, super happy with that. And it also shows uh, that I think this evening is also really about what is happening now and what is going to happen. Uh, Johannes, thank you for the explanation. And maybe I can continue uh, with you, Suzanne. Suzanne Mulder, she's a curator of collections at the Het Nieuwe Instituut, a new institute in Rotterdam that we all know, of course, with that amazing archive of uh, architecture. Uh, Suzanne, I think you're also involved with Herman his work and his objects. Can you tell us something about that? Um, uh, yes, uh, sure. Um, well, as you, as you say, we collect uh, archives. And uh, we also uh, already for now, Herman, for almost 10 years now, we are working uh, with your archive. Um, we have um, transferred it to, to our national archive uh, in several parts. Um, also, this photography project is, is part of, of, is linked to uh, the archive that we are acquiring at the State Archive. Uh, because we are in the way how we collect archives, uh, we are also very much uh, interested uh, in sources of inspiration. And we don't uh, collect an archive and just picking the beautiful drawings uh, of buildings that are executed or only the drawings of the famous buildings. No, we really do archives and also material that gives context uh, to, to buildings and the thinking of an architect. And of course, we also collect uh, Hermann's Musée Imaginaire, but um, his real Musée Imaginaire with objects, uh, we cannot collect. So that's why we made, uh, we document it with photographs and interviews uh, and so on. Well, I, I, I also can talk for hours about the archive. I don't know where to start, but uh, maybe, uh, yeah. yeah. If you'd like to, yeah. She is the other doctor who is, <laughs> who is uh, <laughs> examining me from the inside. Uh, and um, yes, she's a good doctor, I think. But uh, it is all the fragments. And you know, since I, I'm an architect, without good ideas. I never had a good idea. I mean, I'm not like you. You, are, you have good <laughs> ideas every day. And I am just a sort of digger. 
maybe you can say a gold digger. Sometimes, you know, you are digging sweat and everything, digging, going through, and then you find some little thing. Maybe I can do something with that. And um, this is how I, how I work, how I worked, you know, hours and hours digging and putting everything I found aside to find that, that little thing. And, and she has to clean up all <laughs> these parts, you know, all these lost parts. It's a terrible task, but I'm very grateful that you're doing it. And is I it have so many sketches, there are so many uh, texts that, in fact, don't, they don't work, you know. <laughs> Nothing works. It, it always can be better, you know. Aldo van Eyck would say, would have said, uh, uh, he did his best, but not enough. <laughs> okay, f thank you, Suzanne. Uh, I look at... Yeah. Isaac, first of all, of course, thank you for joining here. You were one of my Herman. teachers <laughs> 40 years ago. Uh, I, uh, you worked together a lot with uh, Herman. And so maybe you can also reflect maybe a bit on your collaboration, but also... Collaboration? Collaboration, no, uh, no? discussions. Discussions. Uh, <laughs> and digging into our different uh, brains. No, I, I asked myself, uh, what would I do this evening here? And, uh, what? and then I thought uh, uh, several things I would like to, to talk about if I've got the time. Uh, and then I, uh, rem uh, one thing is, uh, uh, we have something in common, in common together. Um, for example, our telephone number is almost the same. <laughs> we have uh, remind, six, six, so two, two, four, four, three, <laughs> seven, nine. My telephone number is the same. Six, six, two, four, three, six, two. I'm symmetrical. <laughs> you are not, but yeah. I am. Uh, but that is not the main source of uh, uh, commonness. We, are, we, have this, we have two similar sources. One is that we, the first years of our life, lived in Amsterdam South Berlager. Not in the Berlager Institute. Not in the, I'm still living there, but we are both living in the edges. You are near the center of the, of the town. And I am near the, 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 uh, the, the edge of Berlage uh, plan. Uh, that Berlage plan is so interesting, you, ma you might uh, know why, uh, especially because in, uh, uh, the houses together form the urban space. And that has something to do with the little particles of central beheer, for example. Uh, he doesn't build with bricks. He, does, he even doesn't know what bricks are. He only knows B2 blocks of uh, <laughs> concrete. But his, he, he builds with small volumes. And these small volumes together make urban spaces. And I remember once, uh, I can talk also very long time, so cut it off if I'll you don't it like it and, anymore. <laughs> uh, once I... I wrote for the daily uh, paper Het Parool in Amsterdam. And then one of my uh, objects would be Central Beheer. And then I decided, okay, I'll do that. But uh, I will not take pictures. I, I'm not a photographer. And then I came in and I was so overwhelmed by the huge space in the middle that, that I asked somebody uh, working there, can you have a, 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 a camera and, and, and a film at that time? And so I made nine very nice pictures uh, in my mind. Okay, uh, that is one source. The other source, which is rather actual, uh, uh, although it is uh, rather historical, is Montessori. Uh, Herman is Montessori, he builds Montessori, 
and thinks Montessori and knows everybody thinks about Montessori and is even uh, doing the, his teaching here uh, in more or less, Mon what is Montessori? Montessori is that you are educated to be yourself, to become yourself and to be able to be uh, an independent in, uh, uh, individual in a society. Uh, for me, that was important when I was four years old. They sent me to a kindergarten at the Daniel Willings Willingplein at that moment, it's now Victoriaplein, near the Wolkenkrabber, the skyscraper of the GF style. That was a very, very nice place uh, uh, for me. It was not nice at that time because at that time uh, you only, uh, they, they uh, made this, um, uh, separation between Aryan and non-Aryan Jewish uh, uh, people, and I uh, happened to be the non-Aryan, and uh, I had to go to Jewish schools, especially established, but the, the board of the Montessori in Amsterdam uh, made, uh, asked from the collaborating uh, 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 government of that time, we want to have Montessori schools for our Jewish children as well. And then I was there one year, and at that time I learned very much uh, reading, writing. I was four years old, I, they didn't architecture, but otherwise I had to be, become architect as well there. And then afterwards I missed four years, and I missed nothing. I, there at Montessori, I learned everything, and uh, uh, maybe I will come back to this subject in another moment, but Montessori is uh, okay. <laughs> 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 and Herman, who is Montessori, is super okay. Well, I, I would like to talk half an hour about this, <laughs> but just to shortcut it, uh, talking about Montessori, because there might be somebody uh, that who, who is not knowing what does it mean, Montessori. You can say that normal education is putting uh, knowledge in the head of the people. So you, you learn this is like this, this is the, the truth, and this is how the world works. Whereas Montessori is trying to get out of your, of your, your brains. Uh, what, what are your specialties? What are the things you can do? And then you find, find out that some, some people uh, are not very, very good uh, for mathematics but maybe for music or for something else. And, 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 and th this has very strongly influenced me that you should never make an, an object uh, which is specifically for one purpose, for one task, but that you always make your, your uh, um, objects in such a way that the people who are uh, using it uh, could do something what they like, what is important for them at that spe specific moment. And that for me is a leading principle, became a leading principle, I c could say in my life. What I learned from you is something else, apart from the fact that, that we both love that Berla Quarto, and I can confess you that I'm still writing on it. I'm still trying to, to make a, a good text on it because people don't understand this what's going still, on. It is still our norm. Yeah. You, uh, I, when I was maybe seven years old or something, I already knew what good architecture and urban space was. That was the place where I lived. Yeah. Where we live. And you are 
of living in a, in a house with the most fantastic portico because they tried everywhere in that neighborhood to make the front doors of all the, of all the apartments directly connected to the street, uh, which is completely unknown today, what which was said. But I learned something specifically from, from you. You, you always used, or no, not always, often used the expression, this is beautifully dull. <laughs> <laughs> you, you forgot? I for no, totally beautifully forgot. Dull. And that's very essential because architects are always trying to make things beautifully interesting. And I'm always, when I'm working, thinking of you, it should be dull. It should be in a beautiful way dull in the sense that it is not going to explain more than it is. On the other hand, there are things which are very dull and not beautiful. You but said then, beautifully dull, yeah. so it's a, it's a connection of beautiful and dull. I agree. Yeah. But there is another escape. Well, thank you very much, uh, Isaac, for your, uh, I think, very intriguing and also personal uh, contribution, and I didn't know, but I share absolutely this uh, fascination with Amsterdam South and the front doors. In fact, I'm also writing about it, but that's not relevant now. Um, but I can also remember something, uh, Isaac, from when you were teaching us, that was also a statement that I will never forget. You would show new buildings. It was the early 80s. Architecture was not, yeah, was maybe quite dull and not that fantastic. But then you would say, but at least the building is white, so I still like it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are, only, there are only three or four buildings that are white in that, that whole area, of which you have the open air school of Dauker, yeah. which is hidden in, in the courtyard. In, in the courtyard, yeah. And you have the you know, synagogue. Synagogue. Yeah. The, 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 the Lekstraat synagogue. Yeah. Elsos. Yeah. Elsos. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I'm, we have to move and, on. And we have more thing. guests. Uh, Lisbeth, yeah, thank also you. it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you for coming. Thank you for inviting me. Um, I have a long relationship with Herman, which started when I was 17. Imagine, even younger than you are. And I, was one, I wanted to become a civil engineer. And somebody said, well, you go and learn to draw, because that's very handy if you go to the university for civil engineering. And he said, oh, you try Herzberger. I didn't know him. So I tried Herzberger. And I said, OK, I can do very little. I can do a stripe here, and I can do a, a word there. And I want to be paid 10 euros guilders at that time uh, without tax. And I want to start tomorrow. That was my introduction. But I didn't know that you were so famous. <laughs> you were so famous. There were very many people on the, on the street that wanting to work with you and even without pay, payment. And well, I think you had a good laugh about me. Uh, but then you said, OK, come and work with, with me. And what happened then, that was why I adore you so much. What you did, without knowing maybe, is inspire me in a way that I never seen before and actually after in the way you do it. I, I give you an example, like you sit here, everybody, and over there, that the, somebody gives a lecture, you don't understand actually what he is saying. You don't agree, even agree with what, you, what he is saying. But the way he says it, the belief in it, the inspiration which what, with the way he puts it, makes you run out the door, go home and make a design. And that inspiration is so key to your, to your uh, uh, route in becoming an architect. The inspiration, and whether it's uh, uh, about urban space, whether it's about detailing what you did, whether it's about uh, uh, social, social spaces, the way you did. And I must admit, I was more into beautiful buildings, which of course I didn't tell. 
but I was, and you knew that. Um, so there became a time that I said, I don't want to continue with you. I want to go work somewhere else. And I wrote myself already uh, a letter that you only had to unscribe. Yes, I did. And um, with fantastic things about myself. And then you th put that away, but you said three things. You said, listen here. She's obstinate, fast, and good. You, you won't regret it. And I nev never had a better letter in my life. So that's what you thought of me, and I'm really, really proud of that. And you made me change from civil engineering to architecture by inspiring me, and you kept on inspiring me enormously, and you still do. You see, you see how dangerous it is, it is to teach. Huh? It makes me remember one student I, I used to have, and he was, he was very bad. I mean, it was not you. It was very bad. Uh, he, he made an uh, assignment, and nothing, nothing was okay. And then he, he got, uh, what is an onvoldoende? I don't know what an onvoldoende in Engels is. Huh? Not not sufficient, Mark. And then students always come to talk with you, to try to to get it a little bit up. And I started to say, yes, this could be better. And I, in fact, I thought he should stop his studies because it was really nothing. And I said, well. I tried to explain him how bad it was, but he was in a friendly way by saying this could have been like this, this could have been better. And at the end of my talk, he was saying, well, I have to confess you, I decided to stop this study, but now <laughs> I'm completely, <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> So, you, so you did that uh, yes. with my work. But I remember yeah. that yeah. you made this beautiful watercolor. Yes, always. Yes, still. I thought, this is not architecture, this yeah. is watercolor. Yeah. 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 You, 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 you were really angry because I, of course, I asked you to, to, to look at my master's, and my master's was for half the way, was about was big aquarelles and, and big paintings and big, uh, big drawings or hand drawings. And you said, what, what are the drawings? What do they have to do with, what, what has that, that to do with architecture? Well, I for mean, me, architecture is not art. <laughs> it's, it is. <laughs> it is not art. You have to work like an artist, but it's not art. Yeah. You disagree See, there with we me. disagree already. <laughs> now we have it. The first yeah. bottle is growing. Yeah. yeah. That's what happens eh, when we have uh, champagne glasses uh, in the room, but it's all fine. Thank you, uh, Lisbeth. Yeah. I hope you don't mind. I didn't introduce you. I thought everybody knows you, but of okay. course, uh, yeah. Um, yeah, there's still some more uh, people in the circle, and um, I'm looking at Carola. Carola, maybe, I hope you don't mind saying that. You're a bit maybe the outsider in this circle. Eh? You're already now for quite some years here, a uh, professor of uh, history of architecture and urban uh, uh, design, urban development. Uh, of course, you know the Dutch architectural history and architectural scene. So what is your reflection on a night like this? Well, first of all, I should say I probably also encountered you at the age of 17 when I started architecture, but only on paper. So we had Benevolo's history of architecture with the black and white Central Beheer building image in there. So we kept on crawling into this image and I probably kept it in all my history lectures since then. So I'm still using the black and white Central Beheer image and we are thinking about all the typewriters. Is that history? That's history, yes. That's history. <laughs> So you made it already in the 1980s in our history books. 
And you're still in the history lectures today, and I really like this old one image because we can talk about endlessly, even thinking about, I was asking a colleague today, do you act, did you actually design a chair? Because usually I introduce all the architects that I'm talking about in history with the chairs they made. But I haven't been able to find one of your chairs, so I need, a, I need to update that. And we've been discussing your buildings, trying to bring them to the present, also by saying, well, all these typewriters in this room, what kind of a noise must that, that have been? And could we use those same rooms today with our Apple laptops and uh, credit cards and iPhones lying around them, or would they be stolen right away? What kind of society was that where you were working so openly? And in many ways, this is exactly what we do here, but you couldn't have carried your typewriter up there to hide and uh, work in a corner. So in that sense, even though we met only personally today, I think you've always been in my talks and lectures. And I'm going to say one more thing then, but I would like you, if we can make you a gift for the history lectures, I would love to know who you would like to be associated with, who should I put you with in the next lectures, and even for the students who will be taking their, writing the history thesis, maybe you have many more doctors sitting here who want to dive in some, some of your books and uh, drawings and stuff, so you might even want <coughs> to give them some idea how you would like to be put mm -hmm. into history then. But for me, there is no history. Everything is That's today. That's the right answer. <laughs> <coughs> and um, yeah, I, don't, I don't see that people uh, changed very much. They didn't become more intelligent. They're as stupid as they always were. And we still do the same things. Hmm? We have some more techniques maybe today. But uh, I love history as much as I love today and the future, yeah? I remember that I, when I was student in this school, not in this building, but in this school, that we had a history professor, Ter Kuile, and he was a very dull person. He just showed pictures of all sorts of, of all cathedrals and things, and I, I, I was just uh, um, using my time by making sketches of what he was showing in his uh, pictures of the things. And he was just telling when they were built and, uh, and who was the client. And, <clears throat> but I, it was so beautiful what he showed. He, does, he didn't say anything interesting about it that after, afterwards I, I took the train and, and went to see it. And that's my most important source of inspiration, except for what people are doing today. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Carola, and thank you, Herman. And again, it's about looking, eh? seeing things. Um, what is very clear this evening eh, that, that Central Beheer is a kind of red thread through all but the... But it's not history. It's not history. That was the it's point I'm now the, going to make. It's starting to be. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely not history. And I'll give the word, of course, also to Winnie. I will probably also can say something about that. But I just want to say it happened uh, uh, two years ago when we were teaching online. And I was teaching uh, a group of students from Delft with a group of students from Bangladesh, which was easy because it was online. And we uh, invited Kenneth Frampton, you know him, to give a lecture. And it was also very well possible because say, I'm not traveling anymore, but it's online. So I'm happy to do it. And we told him, yeah, this studio is about affordable housing in Bangladesh. It has to deal with a lot of social, societal issues. And then he decided to give the lecture about Central Beheer. No. Yeah. 
And he also, because I think that, that is one of his didactic uh, uh, tools, he made a comparison with another building. Maybe I shouldn't mention it, not by you, but another architect. And he made that comparison, but it was super beautiful. And also in the end, you know, discussing, looking at Central Beheer was very inspiring for the students to think about housing, affordable housing, uh, and so it's not history. It is also, I think, pointing to the future. Bini, what do you think about it? About that? the future. Hey, dear Herman, uh, dear all, I think um, I'm very happy that you are joining today to hear the stories of uh, this group of people, um, which have a certain kind of historical significance, but that we will come back to that. I will tell you first about my first day at this school. So I enter an, uh, this tower, and, uh, and they have to go through a big lot of people. On the left, there is an, uh, uh, like a, a room. In the room, many people, and there is a strange couple, um, uh, Meccano, who are uh, defending the project that they have built afterwards in Kruisplein. Okay, this is how you do it. If you graduate, you design a building that you built, I learned. Then I went further, and I came to the uh, next uh, uh, room, I think Zaal B or something like that, and I and to open this, and there was a crowd everywhere, the rest of the people, and there was a strange man. Actually, I saw a kind of sack over his head, a blue sack, and the man was talking like hell, shouting ab about Karl Weber, rationalism, rats that were uh, uh, shouting about the, the Netherlands as a last place to be in that way. That was Aldo van Eyck when I opened his sack. I went up a story, and I... Here, this young man, he had still hair, and was like, oh, uh, uh, about metropolitan areas in the world, about, and about La Villette. Wow, this is a cool guy, I thought also. That's Rem, who was trying to give a speech uh, in front of that room. Then I, I went up to Sao F, I think, and then I saw images of stairs, columns in between, people that were sitting on the stair, and, uh, and, and there was Herman on that same uh, moment, my first day at school. How can I know that that has shaped me so much? That during this time, this three, the big three, I would say, have caused this kind of combination of being social, being demagogic, and being metropolitan, somehow, is what I learned from there. Then I went to Ednesim. Yes, you are right, this was a phenomenal initiative to try to speak with everybody. And you taught me to not only to make installations, which you allowed me to do in blue or in silver on this big hall, but also to learn about talking and provocate. Imagine Renzo Piano in front of you. <laughs> what do you say to him? And uh, how can you make him better in that way? Uh, and uh, immediately trying to say also to you and Karen Frampton in about things that I didn't understand. Honestly, Kenneth Frampton was not my cup of tea in that way. And you went to the Burlage, and yes, beautiful uh, continuation. I was happy to teach with you so many years that have shaped basically my post-doctorate uh, uh, education in the, in the, in the Berlage. But let me that bring you now to, to my practice, Herman. I got this commission. We got this commission for the VPRO, this Dutch broadcasting company. So, and now I have to confess, I abused you. I, did, um, uh, uh, I said to this VPRO people, who are basically like saying, uh, we do it anarchistically, we hate architecture, uh, and then how to make a new building for them. So, okay, we bring you first to the VARA building. VARA is the competitive socialist uh, uh, broadcasting company with they hate. So I know already the answer. No, 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 no. Not such a building with corridors and you see the coffee man already hours before. This was come from, this is a quote from you at a certain moment. So we brought and we went to Central Beheer and then they fell in love. It was immediately that I could take that kind of uh, elements, the openness, the typewriters, the carpets, uh, the, 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 the in, into the design. You came at the opening of the VPRO. I still remember because it was busy, many people were there, and you were sitting somewhere in a corner because, yeah, this is a building 
without corners, to be honest. It's only open corners. And you were calling Aldo. And you said, Aldo, Aldo, you have to come now. I see something that structuralism is continuing with this, uh, with this building. I was extremely proud, Herman, on that phone call in front of me. I was so sorry that I didn't have a mobile phone at that moment to, uh, to, uh, to get it into your history classes in, in that uh, way. So that, that was my start of the career. Then there was a problem at Vredenburg. And I still remember your fight where to keep pieces of Vredenburg alive. And I have this, still this fax that I have, and I send to you somehow to support. Please get their buildings and put it on top of you, is what uh, somehow is still notated in that, uh, in that letter to you. And you did it with a beautiful, say, combination of people. You gave stage, not only to history, but also to future with that building, for better and for worse. And then you took me, of course, in one of the indesums. I was not there. Hmm. You became so critical on me. And so I was called by different students, man, he is like really bashing you. Which was not true, but why was happening? Because he invited Rem to be part of it, and you showed him the buildings of the VPRO and tried to explode Rem that this might be an inspiration of Jussieu, where I was working upon before. And to find out, you know, how can you deal with evolution? That was actually your incredible sympathetic reason. Architecture, we all need basically to study buildings and to make them better, is what you somehow said in that lecture. Uh, Rem didn't say it. He only said, uh, I, yeah, this building should have been in the city. No, 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 you said a landscape is also a valuable part to continue this promenade architectural that brings you uh, up. Now I'm happy to, um, uh, to first to make somehow an affair with Aldo van Eyck again. Uh, with Tripolis, not finished yet, uh, to restore it, to open it. Some people say it was not the best building of Aldo in his life, and but to try to make it more beautiful. Soon you will see it. It's like this building, this interior, you only see stone hedge of, uh, of circles around you that uh, where you can work upon. And to continue, you know, I love density and to want to, but how can I continue Aldo? in that way. So what I did was what he taught me, make an in-between space. Not ready yet, the scaffolding is uh, still there, uh, with a brutalist, say, commercial building, but that somehow, with this echo inside, I hope to invite you that that gives this kind of enlargement of, uh, of your master and uh, of one of my master. And then now, that brought me to Central Beheer, which seems that, do I become like a caretaker of history? or a kind of caretaker of a certain generation, is what, it, am I the next curator for your archive, is what I could say, but I'm so happy to do that. Because also what I saw, I had a client, and the client is hyper-commercial, let me say, has not so much experience in trying to create taste. And, is a, and then he owns Central Beheer. And when you go there, you see it's actually a ruin, to be honest. And uh, uh, so, Happily, I know him, and I thought, I said, what is the problem? And the problem, yeah, money. I cannot restore this thing. It is so complex that I, I'm not going to do it. I keep it as a ruin. Interesting look today to the NRC about, say, our building in the valley, about ruinization. So I think that's uh, anyway good to take up. But then we worked on it, and I tried to convince the client, make extra program around it, make more towers, you get some money, I can get this 50 to 70 million euros that I need to make this building uh, work in that way. And then I was happy now to work with Herman, with Laurens Jan, van Ka, who was, was part of the Indesum and uh, of your office, to turn Centraal Beheer in Decentraal Beheer, to get something like a, con a continuation of uh, structuralism, to open it up. And you said also in the best quote ever done for the Monuments Committee, it's not the total building that counts, it's the structure that counts it and that continues this feeling of having infill. That makes a mix and that uh, uh, leads to a city instead of a kind of monotonous uh, and simple um, uh, person. And with that, with that mixture, with that future, I congratulate you with the first, with your first 90 years and, that, and opening up 
the next 90 years of partying with, uh, with you and your, uh, your, uh, your stories, not histories. No, there is future. Thank you very much. The first uh, time I saw Winnie was at an Indesim. You know what Indesim is, and we uh, had the habit to, uh, to, to change and to uh, re yeah, reorganize the great hall of the old b building, the, the old new building we had, which is burned down now. And um, then there's a sort of, uh, uh, well, uh, fight, and then Vinnie, together with Flores Alkemade, came out as the best, and they were going to make something like a big ship of metal plate. I was thinking, this is not going to work. This is too big, too much for a student. And they were working and finding this, this iron plates and bending them. And they said, my God, how is this? For, how can that, that go? But to make a long story short, they managed to do it. And, and before, you made this, this delft blue thing, all sort of textile in the blue, paint, and use it. I mean, I learned, I learned that things you are going to start, they are going to be successful. That's really what I admire in, in you. And that gives me the, the feeling that you are the right person to work on Central Beheer. I'm still alive. Eh? <laughs> I'm, I'm looking very carefully what you are doing. But uh, I think you are doing a, a fantastic job. I mean, <clears throat> we have to talk about Structuralism for five minutes, because structuralism is um, really al almost always misunderstood. Structuralism, I mean, the problem is that it's of course true that the structure of a building is many times also part of, 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 of the structure, is the structure of the building. But structuralism is something else. And, and let me be a teacher for, for five minutes. Uh, I mean, structuralism came from language philosophy. And structuralism was pointing out, it had nothing to do with building, with just with language, it, had, it pointed out the difference between uh, language and speech. You have the language and different persons in different situations use that language in their individual way. And the idea of structuralism is that you make parts in a building, I mean, I translate it in, in building, this idea, make parts that should stay always and make openings that can be uh, uh, used in a different way. So Central Beheer used to be an office building. You, we better say it was a building used by offices. And I want to show, that wanted to show all the time that you also could use that for school or you could make housing in it. And since today there is only one uh, problem, one assignment, and that's housing, that we try to, 
to show that there it's possible to make the housing. But we need a person like Vinnie to get this, I mean, I mean this, 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 this client, he was impressed by you because uh, somewhere in Eindhoven, I don't know the whole story, uh, you, you, was, you were connected with him and there was a church standing in the way. That's my story. And then Winnie Ma said, well, okay, we put the, the, the church up. I mean, you are a magician. You are really a magician. When the church is, is in your way, you take the, the church and you put it up the other building. So in case there's one person who can uh, realize this, this job, uh, we, we need to use you. And that's what we're going to do. <laughs> and you are going to be successful, <laughs> together with me. <laughs> and Lao Zhang. This is then maybe the moment that I slowly uh, retreat and uh, <laughs> Vinnie and Herman uh, can continue. <laughs> working on the future uh, of architecture and of Centraal Beheer, but, uh, well, we are... Uh, Just one thing. Yes, of course. Today, you can't make any building which is not transformable. Any building you are designing which is not transformable and, uh, uh, in fact, transformable into housing is, in my opinion, uh, 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 is a mistake. Yeah, that's I agree. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, this is really the proof of the pudding whether it's possible to make housing in it. You know? That's what I wanted to say. I think that's a, a very clear but uh, indeed important uh, lesson. And. Uh, Looking again to the future and to our students, we also have a student here, uh, Tariq Albustani. Thank you also for joining. In fact, you were more or less, let's say, uh, yeah, the starting point of this event, sending an email to the Berlage, hey, is something happening with the birthday of, uh, of Herman? And, well, can you say something, uh, hearing all these different stories? Well, I came from different story, um, probably not really um, as the others. Um, when I came to Delft 2016, I was searching to know which actually the most probable uh, school that I have to follow when I'm coming to Delft. And um, we don't have in Middle East probably uh, buildings uh, you designed in, in where I live, where I was living. In Saudi Arabia. Um, I, knew, I knew about you a lot. I heard a lot uh, when I was studying in London. And it was really for me um, a passion to meet you when I'm going to come to Delft, uh, to visit Delft. I didn't know really uh, the, uh, the rest of the architects, which is quite famous in Netherlands, which is sorry, like... Uh, uh, you know you, how, how good you are. Uh, you are so humble, actually. This is one of the things you have, that you are so humble. Uh, do not mention it. Um, and when I came to Delft, uh, I realized that uh, it, it's really nice to, to have a school that you're going to follow when you are study or when you do uh, your design. Um, I was busy more with studying uh, building technology, where I did my uh, master in 2016, and doing engineering purely. And I dive more in engineering. But always architecture was the inspiration for me to, uh, to follow. And when I come back, when I get the time to come back to study uh, again, my, my master in architecture again, uh, and had this small lecture from uh, Thais Eiselberg, my mentor now, uh, about open buildings, open Antwerpen. And he mentioned Yab Bakama, which is uh, one of the most inspiring teachers in, in the faculty. And, uh, Actually, what, what is about uh, the faculty here, 
uh, is giving that, uh, empowering the people when, when the design is happening. Um, where I come from, the hierarchy is really important to be shown in the design. It's really important to show how much the building is high and how much, uh, yeah, the power of the client shown in the design itself. But in, 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 in Delft here, the design was more about the people themselves. And um, I read more and I, I had the chance to ask uh, about meeting you. Uh, maybe that was like for me, could not happen. And you were so humble to, to have me in your office and even read my questions about uh, my graduation. Um, which is, some, sometimes your teachers did, did, don't do it uh, in the, in the in, uh, in sometimes. Um, and um, yeah, learning about you more, when, when we had uh, this meeting, and you said now that this photo is not about architecture, but it's actually, oh, everything is around architecture is the thing that we built, again, to, to have the design. So tentative for the details, for the concepts, and it's, it's actually uh, very inspiring. Um, designing for the people more than desiring uh, for, for the ego of the client. Um, that was really inspiring for me. And then, yeah, thank you, thank you so much. So I'm really... Um, <laughs> I try to hide myself as much as I can, so I know this is really a high bar uh, meeting, and I'm really... Um, not really in the, in the same level, uh, sir, like... But I want to, to say something, uh, particularly to the students. Um, I have been very lucky. I lived, and uh, well, I'm still living, but in fact, I lived in a fantastic period where everything was possible, where everything was growing, and all, everything you, you dreamt of could, could be made that, at that time. This period is over now. Uh, I'm sure that the last building of this period is the valley of, of <laughs> Winnemar. After that, the world is completely changing. And the whole idea of architecture is, is going to be, to, to, to ch change com completely. And although I was seduced to come back here in Delft to, uh, to, uh, to, to help with the group, my belief is that today it's, it's the students that could learn us, maybe, what should be done, and not the other way around. I think it is your turn now, and you have to, to live in that new world of that, that, that big transition, which is, uh, at this moment, uh, uh, happening. And there's one word which will be the dominance of everything which is going to be designed and thought, and that's reduction. Everything you have to learn uh, uh, to reduce and, and, and come back from the Acropolis and go to the to the ground floor of architecture and see what is, what is possible. And I think this is going to be a fantastic period. Thank you very much. Well, Herman, I think it's all of us that have to thank you. I think this is a wonderful let's say, conclusion uh, of this uh, uh, session. And I think also the best way I can think of starting a new academic year, this appeal to our students, it's up to you. And I think it's also wonderful that you... You should learn, they should learn you what to do. Yeah, exactly. And so I can only, let's say, acknowledge what you said. So that's why I say I think these are wonderful words to start 
this new academic year and this appeal to the students, to learners. We are very uh, grateful that you're willing to engage with our students. So you have, will have the opportunity the coming period to learn things to Herman and to all of us. This was a bit of a short-term, uh, uh, let's say, initiative. So there's still place for students. If you want to join, contact Cecile Kane. She's coordinating. She's somewhere in the room over there. And we are absolutely looking forward, Herman, uh, to having you again in our... Uh... There's some signage. <laughs> well, Cecile is there. So you will be back soon. I think that's also uh, really wonderful. So again, thank you so much for willing to join us in this, uh, I think, quite... Uh, wonderful event, celebration of you, and uh, thank you. Thank you. So, this is the end of this uh, very special edition of BK Talks. Uh, the next edition are probably now being announced on the screen, but you will find them, of course, in the hundreds of posters uh, in the building. So thank you for joining us. Herman, do you want to have the last word? You had a beautiful word. Yeah. Yeah. Okay.